further ado. Good afternoon. This is Andy Pedraza with Special Effects Academy. It is March 11th of 2018. We are going to look at our Forex uh, weekly outlook before the trading week starts. I do ask uh, that anybody else mute yourself unless you have something specific to say. And uh, with that said, we will get started immediately. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, what we're going to cover today in our weekly review ahead of the market open, which actually should be opening right now as we speak, is our currency strength meter, our fundamental announcements for the week, look at the major pairs, look at any setups in progress for the coming week, and we'll wrap up where, where do we go from here as well as a Q&A session at the end. Do not hesitate to interrupt me at any point if you have any questions, provided they are relevant to whatever we're looking at on the screen at the time. This is uh, supposed to be a collaborative effort and very interactive. So if you need to say something, by all means, speak up. We're going to be looking at the relative strength meter, as I like to call it, for the last week. So if you look at the right-hand side, of the screen that you're seeing right now, you will see the prior week's movement. And the one on the left is the week before that, just as a, um, as a historical bit of exercise there if you want to compare. But in the week that just ended, we had the Aussie rising in price against every other currency, as well as silver and gold, which I include in this uh, relative strength meter, except the Canadian. The Canadian was the only currency that did appreciate against the Aussie. Moving on to the Canadian, it did a recovery against every single other currency out there. So the CAD was the uh, absolute winner for the week. And we will see if it has the strength to continue that. You've heard me comment on how I've been waiting for that CAD turnaround, which has been a long time coming. It simply weakened against, uh, against every other currency until last week. If you take a look at the prior week, you see the exact opposite. The Canadian was still weakening against everybody else. Now we have what I was looking for, a clear turnaround that lasted an entire week. We'll see if uh, it continues into this week. On the flip side of that, we have the Swiss franc, which depreciated against every other single currency, as well as gold and silver. So if you want to look at a clear winner for the last week, the week that just ended, the Canadian was the all-time winner, followed very closely by the Aussie. And the all-time loser was the Swiss franc. And then moving on to the euro, the euro also depreciated against everybody except the Japanese yen and the Swiss. The pound was pretty much in the middle of the charts. It depreciated against the Canadian, the Aussie, and the New Zealand, and gained value against the dollar, the euro, the yen, and the Swiss. The Japanese depreciated against everybody else except the Swiss. The New Zealand depreciated against the Canadian and the Aussie and gained strength against all the other currencies, the remaining currencies, I should say. The U.S. dollar was also pretty much in the middle of the pack. It gained value over the euro, yen, and Swiss and depreciated against the remainder. And I'm not going to bother with gold and silver. I just have them there because I like to have that little bit of a... Um, of a tickler of a heads up. Every now and then I do trade gold and silver, so I like to see what they're doing, as well as gold and silver being hedges against uh, stock market and currency collapses. So if you see silver and gold rising rapidly, you can bet that there's a lot of volatility and turmoil in the markets. So that's our overview. I would expect some of these trends to continue especially the Canadian, I'm, I'm not so much expecting as hoping that it continues to strengthen because that will give us a large uh, number of possible trades as the week uh, goes on if we can count on the CAD 
continuing to hold its own. And on, like I said, on the flip side of that, if we can continue trading Swiss weakness, that will also be a good thing. So those are two currencies to keep a very close eye on for the coming week, the Canadian and Swiss. And we're also, to some degree, going to um, be very vigilant on the yen and the Aussie for pretty much the same reasons. They are uh, very lopsided in their strength meter for the uh, for the prior week. Those are going to be the ones to be on the lookout for. Moving on to our next slide, we have the fundamental announcements coming out this week. There's not a whole lot of them. And the ones that we do have, I will mostly be ignoring. I really don't care much about the CPI. I don't care about retail sales, excluding automobile, automobile sales. And again, CPI at the bottom, I do not care. But there are two that I will keep a close eye on. And that is on Wednesday, the 14th of March, we have the Bank of Japan releasing the monetary policy meeting minutes. That is a high impact fundy. It is at 7.50 p.m. U.S. Eastern time. Please adjust for your time zone. This is not a number that comes out. It's the publication of their minutes. And uh, usually people read them and try to gain an idea of what the Bank of Japan is going to be doing in coming months or coming weeks, coming days, whatever the case may be. It gives an idea of where the Japanese yen is headed. So it's uh, very key and has the potential to um, to significantly move the JPY pairs. And on Thursday, we have the Swiss releasing their interest rate decision. And we already said that we're very, we're keeping a very close eye on the Swiss. Do not get fooled into some trade with the Swiss before this announcement comes out. That still gives us three, almost four trading days from right now until Thursday in the wee hours for me, 4.30 a.m. Uh, U.S. Eastern time when that announcement comes out. The uh, current interest rate is negative in the, uh, in the Swiss. That means that they basically pay you a little bit of money um, when, when, you, uh, when you take out a loan. Really what they do is charge you zero, but more importantly, if you have money deposited in a bank, uh, they're actually taking money away from you. So that is a sign of a very strong economy uh, that they can afford to do that for the time being. But at the same time, it's a, um, a, a threat as to what may happen. Any change to that is going to, uh, to send the markets into a bit of a tailspin. So we'll see what, uh, what comes out again. The Swiss uh, economy is considered very strong and is considered very independent of everybody else. They are a hedge currency to a degree, as well as many governments and individuals storing their money in Switzerland. So whatever they do can have a significant effect. As I said, the other fundamentals I am basically going to ignore. So there's only two that I'm gonna focus on. Wednesday, my evening, the Bank of Japan, and Thursday, my early morning, the uh, Swiss National Bank interest rate decision. Andy? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, do you think that uh, Forex traders are concerned when a currency is negative, like uh, Japan negative? Uh, I think Japan is still negative um, and Switzerland negative. Like, are traders feeling, well, okay for the time being, but I wouldn't want to see this go on for a long time? It really depends on the economy. The, uh, the Swiss economy uh, basically makes its money storing money for other people. They are, think of it as a bank that, um, that uh, has its own country, more than a country that has its own bank. So that, that, that's how they make money. So if you store their money there, that, that they charge you for, for that privilege. And uh, they charge you because it's considered one of the safest places on the globe to store your money. Um, so that's really not, um, I'm gonna say that Forex traders don't really pay a whole lot of attention to it because the Swiss isn't heavily traded, but it does have the, um, the potential to move a lot and that gives us the potential to make a lot of money. 
But in the grand scheme of things, a negative interest rate in Switzerland, nobody cares. A negative interest rate in uh, the U.S. would uh, would be very chaotic. It would um, it would definitely crash the dollar. To the Swiss, they can shrug it off. Their economy is small enough, and their situation is different enough from that of the U.S. that they can get away with it. Japan has been trying to weaken their currency, and that is why they went to a negative interest rate, only a quarter of a point, but still. And they have failed. Their, their currency just continues to get stronger. So if they want to try and weaken it further, they're going to have to go deeper into the negative with that interest rate, which they haven't. They had their interest rate decision last week. Um, they've pretty much given up. They're, they're just letting the yen float wherever it may. And, um, and unless it floats beyond whatever, uh, what do they call that? Um, I guess whatever barriers or, or boundaries they've set for it, they're going to be leaving it alone. The last time the Bank of Japan tried to intervene to make the yen weaker, uh, it did the opposite. It made it stronger. So they're probably right now in panic mode and just leaving it alone. They have admitted they don't understand it. As an aside, I'm getting alerts on my phone nonstop that my stop uh, my stop loss is being automatically adjusted on the Aussie JPY, the one open trade I uh, left from last week, which means the Aussie JPY continues to climb. I'm just getting them one after the other as I'm looking at my phone. Uh, not looking at the charts, I'm looking at what's on my screen, but I get these alerts so I know that something's going on. The uh, Aussie JPY continues to climb. Okay, uh, moving on to the Euro USD, we're going to cover all the major pairs, and um, and we're going to start with the Euro USD. And I mentioned before that it's been steadily rising. So we have the last bottom on the visible chart on the daily was in October of last year. But if we go even further back, we will see that it. Um, you can see that this trend line that touched that up bottom on October or early November is a trend line that's coming from far, far back. So somewhere back here in, in the remote past, we had another low. And since then, that trend line has steadily continued to climb. I would not be shorting the euro long term at all, but I am perfectly happy to capture some of these uh, small retracements. You can see that on the daily, it's been trading in a tight range, very much sideways since around the, uh, the start of the year. It does do some very steep movements. It's been bouncing. I really don't know where it's headed right now, other than that it's probably going to try to test that trend line. So there may still be opportunities to trade it down, but I would not um, trade it down long term until it breaks that trend line. So on a break of this trend line that's uh, been coming, like I said, from way in the past, I would look to trade it down to about the 115 area, which would be a nice amount of pips. But until it does that, I am bullish on the Euro USD and we'll be looking at opportunities in the shorter time frames, depending on what it's doing that week, either to trade it up or down, but never staying in a short position too long because as far as I can tell from this chart, any short position is not going to be long lived. USD Swiss, our next uh, major pair. We can see that the USD Swiss bottomed out and has now been doing a bit of a retrace into Swiss weakness, which we saw was the theme for last week. It weakened against everybody else. It is now testing the underside of a trend line that was also established way, way back. Um, so it has uh, it has some strength, some uh, resistance there to overcome. However, if it continues to weaken, and I do love my trends, if I see something trending, and this one is trending up on the daily, I will continue to follow that trend as long as it lasts. So if we continue to see Swiss weakness, I will happily trade this one up to the uh, next trend line here around the 9775 area. Uh, would be that uh, ultimate destination. And that's going to give us about 200 pips worth of uh, gain. So this is a pair I'm going to be keeping a close eye on. 
We made quite a nice, uh, a tidy sum last week trading this one. I did exit the trade on Friday, but we'll probably be looking for another entry later on this week, as early as tonight, if I see something good. The uh, pound dollar, the pound has been weakening um, significantly against all the other currencies for a while. And last week showed some signs of revival, but that one did not extend to the, uh, to the pound dollar. So the pound dollar continues going into pound weakness dollar strength. It's heading towards the, uh, the bottom. It is in a wedge right now on the daily. And I am probably going to be trading this one very, very cautiously if I do, simply because it's at that pivot point where it could really go in either direction. Ultimately, I would expect the pound uh, dollar to try to retest the high at the 143 and a half, 143.50 level, which was the, uh, the, the most recent high. For that to happen, it needs to breach this descending trend line. And when that happens, that will be my entry signal, especially if my indicators start aligning with that movement to try to trade it back up. Uh, right now, I really don't see a whole lot of uh, opportunities on the pound dollar. The USDJPY is another very interesting pair. We mentioned this earlier that the uh, Japanese have been trying to weaken the uh, yen, and weaken the yen means that this chart should be going up. So the more it goes up, the weaker the yen against the dollar. It's done the exact opposite uh, for the better part of a year. They just haven't been able to breach that 114 level that um, has been tested multiple times, at least three times in what we can see in the visible portion of the chart. Likely it's, uh, it has other tests behind here. Uh, on the daily, I'm only gonna worry with uh, about the last uh, year or so. It has now managed to breach a very steep trend line that it had been following since late last year. So we may be in for a bit of yen weakness against the dollar and having this one rise again. If so, this will be a very good opportunity for us. But I would need to see a little bit more of decisiveness from the USD yen in order to enter that trade. That doesn't mean I won't trade it. If you see all these little blue and red arrows I've been trading up and down for months, but uh, I won't be in any sustained uh, or long-term trend until I see a little bit more decisiveness as it tries to climb back up to the top of this channel. USD Canadian. The USD Canadian has been one of my uh, closely watched pairs because I am expecting some recovery from the Canadian dollar. The Canadian dollar had been weakening for really no good reason for for a significant period of time it had its point of maximum strength in the recent past back in august of last year when it hit the 120 area it is now trading about 700 pips higher than that and had made a higher high than it had done since back in july of last year so it is still very bullish this pair so it is still trying to head towards the top of the chart, but it has done a nice little turnaround. And this last uh, daily candle was about as bearish as you can want. If it does breach this trend line, this is the one I'm looking at, as well as this level of support at the 127.75, those would be my entry signals to try to trade it back down to the bottom or to a test of one of the support levels that are in between current price and the bottom of the chart. So this one has risen in my radar of things to be looking at, as have all the Canadian pairs. I have been expecting the recovery, but the recovery is not decisive enough yet. I will trade it. Last week, I refused to trade the USD CAD. This week, I will have it on my list of pairs to actively trade if I see good entries, but I'm still gonna be very cautious until I see more decisiveness out of it. 
Moving on to the Aussie dollar, this uh, chart is all over the place. It's really not giving me any good signals on any of my indicators. They're completely mixed. This is probably a pair that I will either leave alone or trade very cautiously throughout the week as I see opportunities for short games with uh, minimal risk on the hourly chart or some other smaller time frame. As you can see, it has a high at the uh, 81.25 area. It's uh, most recent, I guess, decisive low would be at the 75, which is a good 600 pips. So there's 600 pips of, uh, of uh, potential between these two extremes, and it's right in the middle. It has been following this trend line recently, as well as the steeper trend line is now in that wedge. We're going to have to see which way it breaks out and if we see some better confirmation from the signals before from my indicators before I enter into anything longer lasting than trying to take 50 or 100 pips out of the Aussie dollar. The Kiwi dollar is another one that um, that seems to have played out its most recent move. Um, and we did trade this one up for quite a bit and then started trading it up and down as it made a sideways move. It is sideways, definitely in a sideways channel that has been tested before. So it's done three tests of the top of that channel in the uh, visible portion of the chart. And the bottom has also been widely tested both as support and resistance uh, multiple times. So it's bouncing between the 74.35 and the 72 area that is less than 150 tips. That is the range that, um, that it is currently trading at. I've always expected it to go back to test the top of the chart at the 75 area. It hasn't wanted to breach that far. It's fallen shy by about 100 pips. And right now, it's also in one of those patterns that really don't allow for any long-term trades. But certainly, if we're scalping for 50 or 100 pips at a time, it does seem to have enough juice to, um, to provide us with that. Uh, for the time being, um, I don't think I'm going to be looking at any entries on the Kiwi dollar this week. I'll look at the chart, but I really don't expect to see anything much until it uh, it breaks out in either direction. We'll see what happens. Moving away from the dollar pairs, our next view is going to be of the pound dollar. I'm uh, sorry, the euro pound. Uh, so the euro pound has been also trading within a very sideways channel since around uh, August of last year. It has been bouncing off the 90 area, recently started bouncing off about 100 pips below that, and is now, I do expect the pound to start regaining strength against the euro as well as other currencies. This is another one that I would be happy trading downward, and we did do this last week, and. Some of you may still have an open trade on this one. I just simply decided to close it on Friday and reopen it today. But I will certainly be looking to re-enter this one on its way down. I would ultimately expect it to at least hit the 86 area. And uh, that will give us a nice uh, bit of profit if and when it happens. So another one high on my radar for the week. Euro JPY. Uh, Euro JPY is a pair I have been monitoring for ages, waiting for it to break through some of these trend lines and go into some Japanese uh, regaining of strength against the euro. That has happened. Uh, some of this we traded, and it gave us some uh, some good picks over the past few weeks. It has done a reversal, however, so it stopped its steep drop, has tested the uh, resistance created by the prior support and it's hanging out right below it i would still think that this has room to go towards the bottom at uh, the uh, 122 a huge amount of pips about 900 pips but i'm waiting for a better entry than what it's providing right now so still on my radar but that this one may 
just uh, be a, a dud for the current week. We'll see what it does. Euro Canadian, I am still, as I mentioned before, with the USD CAD, hoping for a Canadian recovery. We see that the last week was definitely a Canadian recovery against the Euro CAD. It topped out after making a higher high at the 161, and it is now trading a good 200 or 300 pips below that level and still headed down. This is another pair that we may enter looking for a return to the bottom of the prior channel, or if, we, um, if we're lucky, even deeper. But again, very cautiously, I want to see the uh, Canadian show more decisiveness than just one week of, um, of retracement. So keeping an eye on it and looking for good entries. Euro Swiss has been trading sideways for, for quite a while since July of last year. Uh, still trending up, so you can see that the longer trend, longer term trends are still up, but the upward movement has stalled. Uh, we have a top at the 118. It is currently about 100 pips below that at the next level of resistance, and I do not know what it's going to do, but if the Swiss weakness continues, this one may try to, uh, to test the high of the chart at the 118.32 and go even higher so another one that's high on my radar for the week as we go into that swiss weakness but very cautiously taking into account they, they do have that interest rate decision coming out on thursday gbp canadian um i'm of two minds on the gbp canadian because i expect both the pound and the canadian to recover and if both of them do recover, that means that this chart will start trending sideways as they both grow in strength, but relative to each other, stay pretty flat. That said, this one has broken through the trend line it had been following. It's now on the underside of that. And if the Canadian strengthens a bit more than the pound, then we may see this one travel anywhere to those prior levels of, uh, of support resistance. Um, this would be a uh, an entry uh, normally on the daily, but my indicators are still the MACD is uh, still bullish, whereas the Williams percent is starting to slide into bearish territory. So I'm going to wait for these to align a little bit better, as well as to see how the week starts out for the Canadian pairs before I decide to uh, try to trade this one down probably would not trade it up any further it's uh it's topped out and there's not enough pips in between to uh, make it worth my while to take that risk there's more downside to playing it up than to uh staying out and waiting for a short entry so we'll see what that does pound jpy this one is going to be one to look out for we have it bouncing off this trend line. It is heading back up. I expect pound recovery more than I expect Japanese strength, so I am bullish on this pair, and I will be looking for entries on the uh, hourly or the smaller time frames throughout the week, especially um, given, uh, as I said, that I expect uh, some recovery from the pound the uh, the pound weakened significantly against the JPY uh, for no really clear reason, just the uh, the grumblings around Brexit coming out of the European Union made the uh, pound go into a bit of a tailspin. But as uh, Hayden pointed out in a similar discussion earlier in today's conversation, these uh, short-term news events that startle the market are rarely long lasting. And if you look at this chart, it is trending upward. It has been trending upward since uh, May. So it's going on a year of, uh, of uptrend after the, um, the uh, woeful performance of the pound uh, post Brexit um, elections uh, or vote rather. So I still expect this one to try to hit the top of the chart again which is uh, close to a thousand pips. I would not taking that. We also have a sideways channel. 
it broke out of and is now climbing back into. So either way, a test of the top of the channel at the 153 almost is still going to be about 500 pips. And if it goes even deeper, it's, uh, it's about 900 to the top or 1,000 if it goes for a higher high. Um, and the signals on the daily are a bit mixed, but I'm sure I can find entries on the smaller time frames that I would like to take on a long position. So this one, I'm definitely going to be attempting to trade it long. I would not short it unless it breaches this uh, new trend line that it formed or goes back to following the old trend line. So on the slightest at the drop of a hat, I'm going to trade it up. I would be a bit more nervous about um, short entries, but I will also take them if the indicators and other signals are right based on the strategies I am following. We're almost getting to the end of our uh, major pairs to review, so bear with me. The Aussie JPY, of course, has been the, um, the great mover because the JPY weakened at the same time as the Aussie was strengthening. So you see this one just, uh, the last day's candle was just fantastic, and it is still climbing right now uh, based on the alerts I've been getting on my phone. This is an open trade. I have uh, our take profit is at the 85. It is this uh, dash dot dash line that you can see here. My entry is way down here, the other dash dot dash line, and my uh, stop loss has already been uh, been adjusted to to, uh, to protect profit. And as I said, it's trailing, so my stop loss is rising uh, and uh, protecting more profit every time this uh, pair continues to go up. So this one is still a good mover if it continues to move. You can do worse than, than jumping on it if you haven't already. But if you do jump on it at this point, I would wait to see valid signals for, for jumping in on the smaller time frame. So don't jump in just because I'm in it and I'm happy with it because I already have a, uh, a profit protection on this one and I cannot lose. My stop loss is now protecting profit. That means I have nothing to risk by staying in this trade and everything to gain. If you enter this trade at this point, you are risking, you may gain, but you're definitely risking. Aussie Canadian, we are looking at the Aussie having uh, done uh, somewhat of a recovery last week, as I mentioned, and then the Canadian also staged the recovery. So you see that this one went up, bounced, and came back down. It is now trading right above a level of uh, support on the uh, daily chart and is far above the trend line that, um, that it had been following on its way up. There is a very good chance with the Canadian regaining strength, if it manages to hold on to that, that it will at least test the, um, the prior trend line, which would give us some decent opportunities for pips. Eh, probably about 100 pips um, between those two points, and even a bit more if it tries to go deeper. So we'll be keeping an eye on this one as well as the week progresses to see if we get any good entries on the smaller time frames. <clears throat> and that is it. That's it for the, um, the major pairs, the charts that we were going to look at. This is a summary of the setups that I see in progress. So we have the Canadian pairs, as I have mentioned several times, they're showing signs of a turnaround. The Canadian dollar is turning around into a little bit of a recovery into Canadian strength. So look for opportunities to trade Canadian strength on the hourly charts. The Aussie pairs, uh, in particular, the Aussie JPY made a very bullish turn late last week. If it continues rising, it will provide great opportunities to ride it to the top look for entries on the lower time frames but in general look at the aussie pairs if you're trading these are still exotics uh no matter which way you look at them if they don't involve the uh, dollar the euro or the pound so if you're looking at aussie new zealand aussie jpy aussie swiss just be aware that um that the, the aussie is in a little bit of a, uh, a grab bag right now based on the uh the strength meter and could go either way but 
if any pair you see a good entry in either direction, I would take it <clears throat> because they have the um, the potential to move quite a significant distance when they start taking off. The Swiss pairs, the uh, the Swiss pairs, and in particular the USD Swiss, seem to be rising rapidly. But in general, as we saw from the strength meter. The Swiss has weakened against all the other currencies the past week. I would look for that to continue, at least until the announcement from the Swiss bank on Thursday early morning. Um, so be aware and be careful of that announcement if you do trade the Swiss pairs. But while that happens, take as many pips out of them as you can. It should continue moving into Swiss weakness. The pound pairs. The pound has also had somewhat of a recovery, as I mentioned when we were looking at the charts. I am and continue to be bullish on the pound as a currency. I would look to trade pound strength against other pairs based on entries in your lower time frame. So don't just jump willy-nilly into pound is going up, let's trade it. Look for the right entries on the smaller charts. The USD pairs, my one note of warning, I'm very wary of the USD right now. I will trade it. There's some nice looking charts, in particular that USD Swiss chart that I already pointed out, but be very careful when you trade it. It can and will turn on a dime. There is a lot of uh, political stuff happening here in the United States, as well as uh, a mixed bag of results. We've got lower unemployment. We've got rising number of jobs created, normally a good thing. But at this point, when our unemployment is getting to a very low number, that also sparks fears of inflation. Fear of inflation means dollar getting weaker. So it could go either way and no way to know until it actually does. So when you trade it, make sure you're not risking too much and that as you make profit, you're protecting that profit. Don't, um, don't fall asleep at the wheel. Risk management, as I always try to tell you guys, and, and I had a very long and, uh, and I considered a very good session last week on risk in general, do not forget to manage and control your risk. All trading carries risk, but in the Forex in particular, it's one of those few markets where you can actually lose more than you have in your account. You may have $5,000 in your account, and you may end up with negative 2,000 after a bad day, especially if you're not protecting yourself as you should be. So make sure you don't, um, you don't fall into that bucket. Never risk more than your maximum percent of overall drawdown. If you decided that you're not going to risk more than 20% of your account, don't violate your own rules. And if 20% uh, is too high based on what you have, then revise that. Don't grab a number because somebody else on the internet said that 20% is the right number. Your rules need to be yours. You're the only person who knows how much you can afford to risk on any given day. Never trade without a stop loss. This is one of those that I constantly amazed when people tell me that there are 500 pips in the red because they didn't see the need to put a stop loss. And by the time they took a look, you know, they, they were done. Um, every single trade I place has a stop loss. I may sometimes trade without a limit. If I'm looking uh, for a trailing stop to take me out, that means I'm already banking profit. But a stop loss is a fundamental part of every single one of my trades. There's no reason, no explanation, no excuse why you guys would trade without a stop loss. So enough about that. And as I said in my uh, recent risk session, never be all in. Don't decide that because Andy said the pound is going up, then I'm going to trade every single pound pair in that direction and ignore everything else. Never bet everything on a single idea. Spread out your risk. Uh, my rules, which are, again, are mine, don't have to be yours, but I draw the line at more than three trades that involve a single currency. So if I'm trading the pound up, I'll trade the pound dollar, the pound, the, the euro pound, and I'll trade the pound JPY. Even if I see a great entry on the pound Canadian an hour later, I will not take it. I'm already maxed out at three GBP 
trades open at any given time. Your magic number may be five or it may be 10 or it may be two. I don't know. That's your number. But um, don't ever make the mistake of putting all your eggs in the same basket, uh, especially on, on, on any one trading idea, because if you're wrong, that's it for you. Now, this is a holdout from, uh, from my prior life as an IT guy, a project manager, and, and a uh, businessman in, in corporate America. We always did what's called a SWOT graph, a uh, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. So I'm going to close this out by showing you that your strength should be, I don't know if they are, but they should be your knowledge, the fact that you have equity to trade with, the fact that you're planning, that you've got good record keeping and you're looking at your prior trades and trying to learn from your mistakes and continue doing what you're doing right. And also teaming up with us, use us. We are happy to help you out. So if you have any questions at any time, not just during these sessions, but any time during the week, reach out. We're always happy to answer any questions. Weaknesses, faulty analysis is probably going to be your biggest short-term weakness. If you're not analyzing a chart the right way, you're jumping into trades you shouldn't be jumping into. That brings us to over-eagerness. Sometimes it's a boring day. I've had two, three days in a row. Heck, at some point I've had weeks where I just don't see any trades. And you start getting that itchy trigger finger. I want to trade. My money's not doing anything. And before you know it, you blow 20% of your account. Uh, you flush it down the toilet. Don't be over eager. Uh, be patient and, and just wait for the market to want uh, to give you the good entry. And as I covered in the last uh, slide or so, bad risk control. Make sure you always know how much you're risking at any time. You don't exceed. Uh, whatever your maximum risk is and that you're managing every single trade. Opportunities. The entire market is your oyster. It's like a, a, a free buffet out there on the market if you know what you're doing. So you can make pips provided you're safely trading, you have good analysis, then there will always be pips to be taken. And threats, again, in, in our risk assessment from last week as well as this session, there will always be uncertainty. When I enter a trade, I am basing my entry on everything I know and my strategies, and I am banking on that thing going up or going down, depending which direction I'm trading. But I don't know. I won't know until I get out of that trade whether I made money or not. And of course, there's always the next black swan coming over the horizon, and you don't know what it is. All you can do is do proper risk control, and you will avoid most, but not all, of the potential threats out there. You'll live the fight again. That is going to be it for my uh, weekly review pre-market open, and I'll now open the floor up to any questions or comments that anybody has. Feel free to unmute yourselves and hit me with anything you want to know. I will also be posting a recording of this session later tonight on YouTube in case any of you missed uh, any portions of it. Then um, you can review it. Um, I don't know how long we've been talking, but I think we've kept it to under an hour. Yeah, we've been here for about 45 minutes. So it'll be a, a reasonably short session for you to review if you choose to do so. Questions, comments? First of all, first of all, Andy, thank you. Uh, always very helpful and great to get a, 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 your overview on, on the coming week. Um, it's um, just, it's a whole new ball. It's getting more familiar. It's um, listening and hearing about the pairs. They're, they're almost getting to be like family. <laughs> Not quite, but yeah. uh, on, the, on the way. And um, just, anyway, very helpful to be hearing this. Excellent. Glad to hear that. Hey, Eduardo, I see you joined, man. Welcome aboard. Um, guys, Eduardo, this is his first time joining one of our sessions. Please make him feel welcome. Welcome. Hello, uh, Eduardo. Welcome. Thank you, guys. You can call me Eddie. <laughs> okay, Eddie. Call you Eddie? Welcome. Okay. We'll be calling you Eddie until we have another Eddie. Then we're going to have to, you know, fast Eddie, big Eddie, fat Eddie. There's just so many <laughs> Eddies out there. 
Right. <laughs> I'm from Brooklyn, so we used to have many Eddies. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not that that small. So I, I go with Big Eddie. Okay. Big Eddie. Big Eddie's yeah. good. So we'll, we'll we'll keep Big Eddie reserved for you on, unless a bigger Eddie comes along. <laughs> Okay, uh, Eddie, did you have any questions or any comments? I, I'm not sure when you joined. You weren't here at the start, but um, if you missed anything, like I said, there will be a recording very shortly. No, I think I caught everything. I got in uh, when you were talking about um, the Euro and the USD attack. Oh, excellent. And you pretty much got, um, got everything from the charts. I did cover a couple of things, the uh, fundamental announcements for the week as well as the uh, relative strength uh, meter for the uh, different currencies before that. So you're probably going to want to watch the first, like, 10 minutes when I post the, um, the uh, recording, and that'll catch you up. Cool. I'll do that. Excellent. Um, so next steps, guys, of course, this was just the, uh, the pre-market review, so I know what I'm going to be focusing on for the week. Um, we will be looking at these uh, over the week and actually setting up trades as they come in for those of you in my uh, Forex trading room. Um, and I, I do post every now and then uh, here and there. I post some of our trades as they happen, not all of them, um, but enough of them. Uh, I'll put them on Facebook or something for people to take advantage of. And, of course, uh, you can always browse over to our website uh, at specialeffectsacademy.com where we post everything. If it's posted on Facebook, we would have posted it on the website before that. So that's your best place to catch up on anything. Um, and I'll keep this open for another couple of minutes in case anybody has any more questions. If not, that'll be a wrap. And, um, and I'll send you guys an email when the recording is up on YouTube. Cool. Is that a Zippo lighter that I heard? That was indeed a Zippo lighter. I love my Zippos. <laughs> it's got that sound. It is very distinctive. I probably got about 50 Zippo lighters. I used to collect <laughs> them at one point. I've probably given away more than, than I kept, but there's still a bunch of them all over the place. Okie dokie, then. On that note, guys, uh, this is Andy Pedraza with Special Effects Academy. I do appreciate you taking the time to join us at the start of the week, and I will catch you next time. Thanks for being a part of it. Thank you, Andy. All right, thank you. Thanks, Andy. Take care. You're very welcome.